Is your house floor to ceiling with junk? Is half your mortgage being wasted on storing stuff you can't even get to? Then you need a drastic cure. Maybe you should check into the Chaos Clinic. My name is Meg Cannell, and I hate clutter, and clutter hates me. For good reason. Here at the clinic, I treat the hopeless cases of can't have anyone over syndrome, or chaos. With my six step plan, I will save the stashers, heal the hoarders, and cleanse the chronically cluttered. Stand up, get up, get up, stand up. Okay. Who's your friend? Meg's our friend. And who's your enemy? Meg's jump and indecision. And what are you going to do? Don't agonize. Open eyes. Yay! 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 Right, sit down, sit down, sit down. I am so excited to say that we have within our midst today, here in this room, a shining star of lifestyle turnaround. Linda Parker. Linda. Step up to the screen and share your shame. I always ask the Chaos Congregation to bring slides with them so that we can all see just how desperate they have become. Linda lives in a lovely house by the sea, but really it kind of looked like a shipwreck that had washed ashore. <laughs> Right, and uh, do you tell the group what room this is? This is supposed to be the living room, but uh, slightly gone awry. <laughs> oh. That was supposed to be the spare bedroom, and there are two beds buried in there somewhere. Not a pretty picture. You see, Linda's clutter wasn't just in the two rooms, it was inside <laughs> the cabinets, too. Oh. Yeah. We had a lot of work to do. Linda was crying out for help, but it wasn't going to be easy breaking those hoarding habits which had always been her downfall. Let me take you back to the beginning. Linda is a single mom living in Brighton with her daughter Laura. She owns a house with five rooms, three for her to live in and two big beautiful rooms for her lifelong companions, Mayhem and Mess. She says she has a bunch of unwanted inherited furniture. Oh dear. She loves all her stuff around her and, she, and she's got a great emotional attachment to things. She finds it very difficult to throw things away and it's her comfort zone having these things. You just get to a point where there's... It feels like there's no further you can go because whatever I move, I'm just moving it from one part to another and kind of redistributing the chaos, really. And poor little Laura. I wonder if she's gotten lost in that clutter. Oh, no, that's Muffy's bone. I don't want you to have that. You don't want that. There comes a point where you just think, well, where do I go from here, you know? I mean, so, to be honest, I had visions of shutting that door and locking it till she went to college, you know? <laughs> she just needs me. It's so nice to be needed. <laughs> I hoped that my visit would help her achieve step one of my program, Confess the Mess. Oh. Hello. 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 Hi. Oh, I'm a furry Hello. friend. Does he bite? Uh, no, she's very <laughs> friendly. <laughs> That's good. All right. All right. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm very well, thank you. Good. This is Laura. Hi, Laura. <laughs> I've come to see the mess. You've talked all about it. I have okay. to see what's going on. Right, go straight I'm just through. So what room is this? This is the lounge, so this is not too bad. This is where I keep Laura's clutter. Is there <laughs> lounging going on in here? Um, not an awful lot. Not an awful lot. <laughs> it looks a not lot of bit. space. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> all right. Are you Nothing ready? shocks me anymore. Oh, do you reckon? Well, I spoke too soon. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, Are you having a bonfire in here or something? <laughs> I think that might be the only way I can resolve this. <laughs> Where's this all from? Uh, some of it's from my dad's house. Some of it's from where I used to live. You have some really expensive stuff in here. And it's just sitting here gathering dust. Oh my, is there a sofa underneath there? I don't think so, but there could be anything under there. <laughs> I'm not really sure. There's a table. Dead bodies or anything? Possibly. 
The only way to find out is we are going in. This is a bona fide <laughs> caving expedition. Only try this with a qualified individual. And be aware of underground hazards, deep water, falling rocks, hypothermia, and getting lost. <laughs> wow, Linda. Do you know, do you remember you even had this stuff? No, no idea. Oh my gosh. Look, the first aid kit. Oh, wow. We'll, we'll need to keep a hold on that. <laughs> What's this? Japanese? Um, I was trying to learn Japanese about six years ago. Is it been in here for that long? Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. All good intentions. Awesome. <laughs> you know what? I think I've just broken the first rule of caving. What's that? I'm, I'm lost. Oh, no. Hey, there's a light down there. Let's follow that. Where's the baby? Oh, she's in the cot. Yeah, but where's the cot? Linda? Well, where are we? We're in the upstairs bedroom now. <laughs> I don't recognize any of this. How did we get here? Oh my gosh. This looks like the downstairs room, but worse. Oh, don't say that. It's not worse. What is this? Oh, that's some wallpaper I thought that I wanted to use for the bathroom, but then decided against it. So what are you going to do with it now? I'm not sure. I, I can't understand why you're keeping all of this stuff and not using this room. Partly just because it's so difficult to clear it out and sort through it, you know. Get rid of the stuff! <laughs> oh my gosh, this this is a disaster in here. This is a room full of indecision. Oh, okay, all right, I've seen enough of this room. Show me what else you have. Okay. <laughs> this is Lara's room. Wow, this is pretty tidy. Yep. <laughs> Let's see your room. Okay. And this is my room. You really do need my help. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Step two, stop hoarding, start living. I designed a unique system to break Linda's sentimental attachment to junk. It was time for her to think inside the box. Four boxes to be precise. I have a trick I'm going to teach you that I do with my clients. Okay. Four boxes and we're going to separate stuff. We've got the happy, Sad, yeah. the good, okay. and the bad. What we're going to do is we're going to pick out some random items here, and I'm going to teach you how to make decisions on how to keep stuff. Okay. All right? We're going to take the emotion out of it in some aspects. All right. A roll of wallpaper. Are you using it? No. But it's good, right? Yeah. Okay, but you're not using it. No, I and thought I would use it in the bathroom and then just decided I didn't particularly okay. want it. <laughs> this is good. Okay. And it goes in the good box. Okay. You understand that yeah. one? Yeah. Okay, great. What's this? Oh, that's a bottle of vintage port. Vintage port? And what's it doing in here? Is it a gift to you? Uh, no, it was a gift that I was going to give to somebody else. And what happened? I decided they didn't deserve it anymore. <laughs> ho, ho So we got the bad mojo vintage port. That goes in the bad box. In the bad box. All right. How about this lampshade? That goes in the kind of good box. In the kind of good box. All right. How about we're just going to go right here in front of us. There's this photo album. Look, it's you on a vacation with some guy. How does it feel to keep them? Mmm... -hmm. I guess they could go in the sad books. They're kind of sad, huh? <laughs> so some sad memories. Oh, all right, we've got something for the sad box. Here's the trick. We've sorted out just four things just to get you started. You're going to keep the happy and the sad, because these are your memories. And you get rid of the good and the bad. This is your clutter. Clutter alert! Clutter alert! Ah, 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 ah. Okay, you might be thinking the system is a little crazy, but hey, the students at my clinic love it. Happy box! Sad box! Yes. Good yes. box! Yes. Bad box! Happy yes. box! Feel it! Live it! Live it! Stan, are you eating cookies? No. Yes, he was! No, he wasn't! Yes, he is! Yes, no, he is! Yes, he is! Yes, he is! Yes, he is! Okay, um, um, next you're going to sort out your piles of stuff 
that you have decided you somehow um, can't live without. Step three, find a buddy. When your house has gotten this bad, forget trying to sort it on your own. You need a sidekick, and I'm looking to Linda's best friend, Lisa, to kick her into action. As a friend, I should be sticking up for her, but actually, as a friend, what I should be saying is, just throw all of this stuff out. She doesn't need it. If I can do something to help her, then that'll hopefully make sure she doesn't end up one of these mad old ladies who sits in the front parlor with things stacking up and stacking up and stacking up, and everything's in reachable distance. Okay, this is the hard part, Linda. Time to stop making excuses and start making some decisions. Where is that candle, Linda? Here, show it to me. What is it? It's a candle. That's a smelly candle, though. It's a smelly candle. Stop prevaricating. Throw it into the bad box now. He went on a race down to Thames this right, right well, very practical. Yeah, that's hideous. Oh no, spandau ballet trousers. <laughs> I bet Lara would like that to put her bits and bobs in. Well, let's not wake her up to find out. Let's... I thought that was such a gorgeous skirt. But you see, this is for tea lights and sort of nice candles as opposed to just utilitarian candles. Oh, 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 oh. These are the sort of things you either love or hate, but I love this. I All right, let's love have a look. This. Let's get this <laughs> in. This was my grandma's. I'm not going to make any the comment there. No, I realise that. that. And it actually and came from Venice. And I think it's so... You have to put that into the sad box. No, a happy mm -hmm. box. Oh, wow. Oh, tassels. Hey, Sissy Roller trousers. I don't believe it. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Someone this attached to her old lampshades and her nasty 70s pants is not going to let go that easily. So I installed a special system which will ensure she didn't stray from the program. Linda, step away from the good box. Do not take things out of the good box. <laughs> There was no escaping. That mess had to go. I was living it up in Brighton, all right, on a mission of mercy to save this lifelong super hoarder from a beast of her own making. Single mom, Linda Parker, was slowly being consumed by an ever-expanding monster of junk, which was taking over her house. By now, she was two weeks into my six-step plan, but there was still a lot to do. Step four, order out of disorder. Wow, Linda, I can actually walk in here. Yeah. It looks like you've been doing some work. <laughs> Definitely. Keeping all the rest of the stuff? Yeah, I think so. Like the toaster. Toaster in this room. What's the toaster doing? Why um, isn't it in the kitchen? Well, there isn't room in it for it in the kitchen at the moment, okay. but it is probably going to go in the kitchen. This is an extra toaster? Yeah. What do you have a spare toaster for? So if the other one breaks, I'll have a toaster. Well, let's just take a trip into the future. Okay. And let's just see what it would look like if we didn't have a spare toaster. <laughs> I can help you. Ma'am, we have an international emergency and we desperately need your help. Do you have a spare toaster? Not the one you use every day, but you know, a spare one? Oh my god, I threw that away years ago. What? You threw it away? Call the White House. We're all doomed. Do you have a spare of everything? No, but if I have a spare, it's quite handy. Like that microwave plate. You have, this is a second microwave plate. So, you just absolutely cannot use the microwave without the microwave plate, if it no, breaks. No, I don't think you can, because it wouldn't spin around otherwise. Right. Let's take a different approach. What if you kept everything that you really love, like this handy microwave plate? 
Let's take a trip into the future and see where that goes. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Ma'am, we need a spare microwave dish to save the world. Yeah, I've got exactly the right thing. Fantastic. Where is it? I don't know. It's in here somewhere. Call the White House. We're doomed. We'll never find it in time. Ah! What's this? Uh, it's a clear box. I thought it would be really handy for storing stuff in. Oh, I can could, I could see it's a clear box. <laughs> so you can see what's in it. Nothing. Nothing is in it. That's what I yeah, see. It will be. Once I've tidied, it'll be really yeah, handy. You do not need to keep this. This is why you have a clutter problem. You're keeping these. I can use it later. Yeah. You're not using it right now. Hmm. Hmm. She says, hmm. Yeah. You know those two other visions are not likely to happen, right? Yeah. What's most likely to happen is this. <laughs> Not you again. What is it now? Ma'am, we have a critical situation and we need a small plastic box. You know, clear, kind of see-through plastic, clips together with the top on. I did have one of those or something like that. I threw it away years ago. You threw it away? Well, uh, that's all right. You know, I'm sure there's a million of them. I'll just go, just go next door and ask. Mm. Tell her to just get rid of it. On top of all that, or rather underneath it, Linda had piles of furniture she didn't need or want. I had a tip to turn it into something every woman needs, expendable income. You're going to have no problem selling the stuff. Okay, here's a couple ways to get rid of them. Okay. It's either time or money. Mm -hmm. If you have the time, you can hang on to it and do it and sell it through a private sale. You're probably going to get what you're looking for if the market will bear. The other way, the more exciting way, is to go to auction. You ever been to auction? <laughs> Sold to the highest bidder. And you never know what you're going to get, but you take the risk. Right. So it's like going once, going twice, three times. Sold to the highest buyer. This room is clear. Step five, when you're on a roll, take control. Most towns have auction houses, and your local auctioneer just loves popping in to tell you how much your stuff is or isn't worth. What's it going to be worth? Four to six hundred pounds, I suppose. That's a smashing book. It's five hundred to a thousand, which is a broad yeah. estimate, five to eight hundred pounds. Why, why, why do you people hang on to this stuff when auction houses and second-hand shops want to take it away and sell it for you? Mm -hmm. All you have to do is learn to let go. This was proving to be the trickiest task for Linda. It's quite a wrench to sell stuff. You associate stuff with certain bits of furniture. And if you've had it for years and years and years and years, then, you know, I can remember the settle being in like, a house when I was 11. And, you know, you just remember things like Christmas dinners or this, that and the other. So it's hard from a sentimental point of view. But, it's got to be done, hasn't it? That bunch of stuff netted Linda nearly two and a half thousand pounds. Back at the clinic, I held a little auction of Linda's spares to put my chaotic clutter heads to the ultimate test. All right, may I bring your attention to lot 236. What am I bid? We're going for 50 pounds, 50 pounds, 50 So pounds, far, 50, 50, so good. 50, 50, 50, they are really showing restraint. Their addiction to bric-a-brac is well under control. As for Linda, well, I couldn't risk a relapse. By now, Linda had had three weeks to conquer her chaos. As I approached the house one last time, I wondered what hoarding horrors still lurked inside. Hi. Hi! It's been three weeks. Are you ready to show me your house? I am. Come in. Okay. <laughs> It's hard to believe that only three weeks ago, half the house was just not usable at all. <laughs> wow! 
You did a great job. It's a bit of a transformation. What do you isn't think? It? What do you think? <laughs> I know. That's what I think too. <laughs> okay. I, I am very excited to see the rest of the house. I hope I'm not disappointed. Show me upstairs. Okay. All right. I think when I walked in the spare bedroom, I was really overcome because I just hadn't thought that it would ever be that nice, really, ever. Incredible. It's so nice to see somebody who's done their homework. <laughs> Lots of homework. A lot of homework. I bet you spent a lot of time in this room. Yep. Right, so uh, delayed decision making was the name of this room before. Now it's decisive, right? Yeah. You made some decisions. It looks great. This is what the consequences are when you make decisions. Mm -hmm. Downstairs, Linda had been so decisive that she'd even surprised herself. How do you think this room came out? Brilliant. I just can't believe it. I would have never believed it would look like this. I mean, you just, you couldn't get in here at all. I mean, I just never thought it would turn out like this at all. This is good. I like it. I really, really like it in here. Yes, she had successfully created a tranquil environment where you could relax, read a book, or simply listen to music. Step six, together we'll conquer chaos. Linda is a shining example of what you all can do if you do follow the six step plan. Linda, do you have anything you want to say to the group? It worked for me, but you've got to do your homework. All right, great clinic today. Everybody stand up and join me in the Chaos Clinic chant. Okay. All oh, from disorder come from confusion. Together we'll conquer chaos. Linda's story is quite a success. By getting rid of all that stuff, she has created so much extra space in her house. She's made it really safe for her daughter, Lara, and we auctioned off all the extra furniture, which I'm sure ended up in other hoarders' pads. Right. No, aren't pencils in the office supplies? Great. Dog toys in the dog toy bin. That's a piece of hardware. It goes with the tools. Excellent. Uh, who, me? No, I, I'm just doing some research. 